putting on a show of readiness. Ukrainian troops dig trenches near the Russian border. They've been put on alert as martial law comes into effect. <laughs> Ukraine's President Petro Poroshenko visited a military training center, urging his troops to get prepared for action. We'll give them no chance to invade into Ukraine. That's why today we are doing everything possible to provide extra financing of the armed forces. Not to be outdone, Russia's defense ministry also released a video of training exercises in the south of the country. Both sides are blaming each other for provoking Sunday's naval clash in the Kerch Strait. Russian ships fired on and seized three Ukrainian naval vessels, capturing the crew. The Ukrainian sailors have been charged with unlawfully entering Russia and are being held pending trial. Western countries are calling for their release. The United States Special Envoy for Ukraine told DW that further sanctions against Russia are on the table. We've tried to ratchet up sanctions gradually in order to create pressure and to indicate that there is a way out. So we would like to talk with Russia about genuinely ending the conflict, withdrawing its forces, re-establishing security, and then getting the Minsk agreements implemented in the Donbass and re-establishing peace. U.S. President Donald Trump has threatened to cancel a planned meeting with Russian President Vladimir Putin at this week's G20 summit. But Russia says the meeting will occur, as it's too important for both sides. Let's get more now. We are joined by correspondents from Moscow and Kiev, Yuri Rashedo and David Stern. Welcome to you both. First, David, I'd like to begin with you. You're standing by in Ukraine. Um, we understand that there is now martial law there, Russian troops on the border, new Russian missile systems for Crimea. Any idea of where this is headed? Well, uh, good day, Sarah. Um, no idea where this is headed at the moment. Uh, obviously, as we heard from the report, uh, both sides are sticking to their positions, and it should be said that the diplomatic efforts are, for the moment, going nowhere. Um, at the same time, it is a very worrying situation. This is the first direct confrontation between Russia and Ukraine since Russia's annexation of the Crimean Peninsula. Remember that uh, President Vladimir Putin uh, admitted later that those were, in fact, Russian troops in Crimea. And, of course, the two sides have been uh, 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 have been in confrontation in eastern Ukraine. Uh, Western journalists and independent groups have determined that the, that there are Russian troops there. But anything between actual Russia and, and Ukraine has not been has, hasn't happened since 2014. So it's difficult to say how this is going to develop. And obviously, people here in Ukraine are watching very closely and are quite worried. And there's also talk of imposing new sanctions on Russia now, fully implementing also the existing ones. Yuri. How much could that hurt Russia? Enough for it to make a difference in policy? I don't think, Sarah, new sanctions would change the Russian policy towards Ukraine that much. Uh, people in the country, political elites, the leadership in the Kremlin are already used to sanctions at this point. Instead of that, new sanctions could probably bring Russia further away from the peace process. Uh, the peace agreement of Minsk might be as good as dead and may never have been implemented, but it all sides emphasize repeatedly uh, that there is no alternative to it. However, the source, the reason of all problems remains that the Russian annexation of Crimea from Ukraine 2014. Moscow has seen the peninsula as Russian territory for more than four years now. The Ukrainians see the peninsula as Ukrainian. That's why a political settlement in a real dialogue between the two countries uh, and perhaps between the two presidents is more needed than any new sanctions, I think. Meantime, we have U.S. President Donald Trump saying in an interview, let's get Angela involved, of course, referring there to the German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Petro Poroshenko also mentioning her as a possible mediator. Um, David, what role could Germany play in all of this? Well, it's difficult to say, um, but obviously uh, Chancellor Merkel does have a, a long-standing relationships with both uh, President Poroshenko and with uh, uh, President Putin. Um, much more, the Ukrainians, uh, President Poroshenko and the Ukrainians say they trust her. They trust, they think that she understands the situation, um, understands uh, Russia as well as uh, uh, Russia's actions. But at the same time, as I say, they, uh, the the diplomatic uh, efforts are going nowhere. And uh, it, it exactly what exa uh, Germany could bring to the table, seeing that they have also been involved in the Normandy Four Talks, Normandy Four Talks is, uh, is difficult to say.
Yuri, how is all of this playing domestically for President Putin? Because we know that uh, the Russian president's approval ratings have slumped, partially because of existing sanctions. Is this escalation in the conflict with Ukraine likely to help him get back support from the Russian people? Well yeah, well, in my opinion, this story won't actually have a big effect for Vladimir Putin's approval ratings either way. Either way, uh, Of course, Russian propaganda is trying to squeeze everything it can out of the incident for the domestic audience. And of course, the Russians claim that the Ukrainians provoked them. Uh, this incident may send a new wave of anti-Ukrainian sentiment uh, throughout the country. But on the whole, Sarah, Russians are too busy dealing with their own everyday problems to care about Ukraine. The euphoria over Crimea is well and truly over. Ukraine has been portrayed as the enemy on state TV for too long. People aren't really interested in the conflict anymore. And Putin knows that too. It's more important to him what the West thinks about the conflict now, how the West reacts, I think. Yuri Vachetto in Moscow, David Stern in Kiev. Thank you to both of you. And amid the escalating tensions between Russia and Ukraine, a forum of Ukrainian and German business leaders is taking place in Berlin. Speaking a short while ago, Ukraine's Prime Minister Volodymyr Groysman said that he hoped that German companies would invest in Ukraine despite the conflict. He thanked Chancellor Angela Merkel for supporting the territorial integrity of Ukraine. Merkel said that she would speak to Russia's Vladimir Putin about the conflict at the G20 summit later this week. Germany has been a key mediator between Ukraine and Russia. Let's bring in our political correspondent, Fabian van der Mark, who is standing by at the forum for us. So, Fabian, what else did the German and the Ukrainian leaders have to say about the ongoing tension between Russia and Ukraine? Well, the Ukrainian prime minister clearly called it a Russian aggression that could happen anywhere. And he also spoke about the need of the Ukraine to protect its integrity, defend its integrity. And he also thanked Chancellor Merkel for her stance, for her clear position. But and he didn't renew the requests that we heard of uh, President Poroshenko earlier of German military or new sanctions. Angela Merkel, on the other hand, uh, she said that it's clearly in Russia's responsibility to release the soldiers to make those Ukrainian harbors accessible. She also said that she will speak to Russian um, President Putin at the G20 summit and that Germany and France would remain uh, willing to mediate between Russia and the Ukraine as they did it in the uh, Normandy format, in the Minsk process. And also Angela Merkel said that uh, she didn't mention military or new sanctions, but she defended the existing sanctions. And maybe we can just listen what she said there. We don't impose sanctions on Russia for sanctions' sake. Rather, we impose sanctions to make clear that countries, even if their territorial situation puts them close to Russia, have the right to their own development. Those are the principles of international law. And, you know, adding to that, Fabian, um, the German Chancellor, she has also said that she's committed to the Nord Stream 2 pipeline in the Baltic Sea. Um, despite tensions in the region, could this joint project with Russia now become a problem for Merkel? It is already a problem since the U.S. is against it. Many European countries are against it. And, of course, also the Ukraine is strongly against it, has asked to stop this project. The Ukraine is afraid that with this pipeline, this bypass through the Baltic seas, uh, Ukraine could lose its status as an important transit uh, state and could then be more vulnerable uh, to Russia. Angela Merkel has said she tries everything that Ukraine remains an important transit country and what was interesting, she dropped a quite silent line where she said that Germany could also use its energy ties with Russia as uh, a leverage against Russia. Fascinating stuff. Fabian van der Mark standing by there at the German-Ukrainian Economic Forum in Berlin. Thank you, Fabian.